Hey everyone, today I want to talk you through vSphere licensing, specifically around choosing the right option to license your vSphere environment. So whether you're a customer or your partner and you know you have a need for um, a hypervisor solution, specifically vSphere in this scenario, we all know there's a lot of other options like out there like Hyper-V, Acropolis, Citrix Hypervisor, you name it. Um, VMware still has the most robust capabilities when it comes to the hypervisor space. Um, so note that, you know, let's say you do know that, you know, you have a customer or you are specifically looking for vSphere. Now you have to decide what edition best fits, best fits your specific use case. And that's what I want to walk you through today. So here you can see I took some of the most common features that, that my customers will ask me about vSphere. These are the ones that are more widely known and widely used. And I also broke down um, the vSphere um, the vSphere additions here. So you can see on the top, we have things like Essentials, Essentials Plus, Standard, as well as Enterprise Plus. To get out of the way, of course, all of them include ESXi. They all include the vSphere hypervisor. Um, do note though that when we talk about Essentials specifically, Essentials doesn't give you really any capability outside of the hypervisor. Um, and you can potentially get a you know an instance of vCenter if you get the Essentials Kit, which we'll we'll talk about a little bit later. So think of this as more useful for test or, or dev environments. Um, we also have Essentials Plus. Um, you do get some additional capabilities that really really make VMware great, right? Like vMotion and storage vMotion, so you can migrate VMs from one host to another. Again, there are some limitations still made for a small environment, an SMB type customer, because this supports only a maximum of three hosts. So do note that, and I'll explain more when we get to the Essentials Kit. Going from vSphere Essentials Plus to vSphere Standard, um, this is what I would normally recommend unless you have those smaller use cases. You still get vMotion, storage vMotion, but you also get vSphere HA and you get fault tolerance if you have a use case for fault tolerance. Um, the big thing here though to note is now you're licensing on a core basis. So per populated core, and this typically will include, if, especially if you get the what's called an acceleration kit, um, the vCenter standard um, license as well, which is used to manage multiple hosts from a single management console. The primary difference from standard to enterprise plus is really um, DRS, distributed resource scheduler, and distributed switch. So do note that those capabilities are very important to a lot of organizations out there. It makes it a lot easier to manage networking. It makes it better to create schedulers to migrate VMs using vMotion based on um, resource utilization, as an example, by leveraging that DRS feature. Uh, so here you can see some write up about the different additions here. So again, we talk about standard. This is basic features for server consolidation. Um, there is a support contract that's mandatory for vSphere standard, so make note of that. Um, Enterprise Plus, you literally get everything that vSphere provides. You also have a support contract that's mandatory. Um, you have the Essentials Kit, so I'll explain that in the next slide here for both Essentials and Essentials Plus. Um, you also have vCenter editions as well. So vSphere by itself is not super useful because you have to actually connect to the host itself if you want to manage it and you need to have to manage those hosts individually. Um, vCenter gives you the capability to manage multiple hosts from a single management console. So you have vCenter server for essentials. So this is going to be with the essentials kit. You have vCenter server foundation. So it's again for smaller environments. Um, I don't see too many of these being leveraged, but there are certain use cases for them. And then vCenter server standard, which is again, the most common scenario out there where you can manage an unlimited number of hosts through vCenter and that's licensed on a per instance basis. So make note of that, that outside of the kits, if you wanted to have, let's say you had two data centers and you needed a second instance of vCenter server standard in that secondary data center, you're gonna license yourself for an additional vCenter license. All right, moving on. So here's some of the limitations for vCenter. So for server essentials, number of hosts is three. It's only good for vCenter essentials and vSphere essentials and vSphere essentials plus. Um, vCenter Server Foundation has a limitation of four hosts. 
and that's good for standard and enterprise plus as well as vCloud suite, um, which we're not going to talk too much in this video about. And then we have vCenter Server Standard, which is a top tier edition for vCenter, which is again a number a limited number of hosts, and it supports vSphere Standard, Enterprise Plus, as well as vCloud Suite. All right, so moving on, you also have something called VMware vSphere Remote Office Branch Office. You might know it as Robo. Um, this is designed for if you have an environment where you have multiple branch offices and you want to support VMs in those branch offices. So they're purchased in bundle packs of 25. So let's say you're a credit union as an example, you have your primary location as well as different branch offices in which your customers go to to visit to make deposits, withdrawals, whatever the case may be. And you have certain applications that live on infrastructure at that branch office because you want to make it as close to the employee as possible or maybe even to the customer as possible depending on the application. You might go with the robo option because robo supports up to 25 virtual machines running in that branch office. And there is a maximum of 25 for that branch office, but you can split up that 25 across multiple branches. So you can't do 50 in a single branch, but you could do 10 here, 10 here, five there, and mix it up that way. But note, you can also have multiple packs. So if you wanted, let's say 325 VM packs, because you have multiple branch offices, this might be a good use case for you. It tends to be a lower price point, um, but once you do hit past that 25 VM for the branch in VMware terms, they consider that production. So now the robo licenses aren't really applicable for that, that specific branch. It does come available in three different editions, so you can see them here. So we have standard, enterprise, and advanced. So just make note of that as well. All right, so going to the essentials kits. Um, so I mentioned this before, we have an essentials kit for both essentials and essentials plus. You can see the two different options here. They support up to three hosts, and each host can have two physical CPUs each. Um, each kit consists of six processor licenses for, for vSphere and one instance of vCenter server for essentials. So again, if we do the math, three hosts, two CPUs each, that's six processor licenses to support vSphere, and you get that instance of vCenter server for essentials to manage those three hosts. And this is again, it's designed for small offices. It cannot be combined or decoupled with other vSphere additions that are out there. So if you end up having a use case where your customer or you are a customer and you need to upgrade to another edition, you can upgrade this environment over to, to um, the acceleration pack, which we'll talk through right now. So now we have the acceleration kit. Um, these are actually very, very popular because it includes six processor licenses for vSphere. These are vSphere standard licenses, as well as one instance of vCenter server standard. Um, there's also an option for eight processor licenses for vSphere, but you get um, vCenter server foundation instead. So my rule of thumb is I prefer this, the first option because you get vCenter server, which can support unlimited hosts. So as you continue to grow and you add additional processor licenses to your environment, you can manage those from vCenter server. Whereas for the server foundation, we saw a limit earlier to the maximum host of four that it can manage. So that bottlenecks you and you'll eventually have to add a, a new vCenter standard license if you went with that option. So rule of thumb, the first option is probably a better fit. It depends on your specific use case, of course, but that's what we see as, as a more common option. Um, so I mentioned, you know, it's available as standard. It's also available as a enterprise plus acceleration kit. So you can choose which edition you want, depending on if you need that ability for DRS as well as uh, the distributed switch capability. We also have VMware vSphere for desktop. I don't want to spend too much time on this one, uh, but this is intended to be used only for desktop virtualization. So this is used in tandem with Horizon 7. It's included as a part of their bundle SKUs, and you can't have any other infrastructure that lives on these, these specific hosts. It's only to manage um, Horizon workloads. We also have Tanzu Basic, which I don't know a lot of. I, I haven't seen too many use cases with Tanzu as of yet. 
but I know it's up and coming and we're seeing a lot being done with containerization. Um, I see a lot of vendors getting into this space and VMware wants to be able to manage these as well. Um, but note that if you are looking to do or you currently are managing containers and you have containers in your environment, VMware has a solution for you to manage those. Um, so this is an add-on to vSphere Enterprise Plus or it can be a bundle with vSphere Enterprise Plus. So it's either you can bundle it as you purchase it or you can add it on later and it is a subscription license. So that, that's everything I have for for vSphere. Um, one last thing I do wanna leave you with is a, to, to reiterate, because I don't know if I touched upon this too much, uh, for just traditional v, vSphere standard and Enterprise Plus, those are a processor license. So you do the math if you have four hosts with two physical processors or two sockets in each of those hosts, that's gonna be eight vSphere standard or enterprise plus licenses that you need. Or you could go with the acceleration pack and then add any additional processor licenses you need on top of that. That tends to be the most cost-effective method, uh, but hopefully this helps. If any of you have any question, feel free questions, feel free to write in the comment box below and I'll try to address those as, as well as I can. Thanks all, and thanks again for watching.